Hello everyone, Mr. Winnie 1235 back here yet again, finally, for the highly anticipated CD Collection Video 2. And uh, let's go ahead and get started, huh? Kept you waiting long enough. This is Classics for Relaxation. This is a big uh, compilation of like a classical music, Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, kind of the big names. A lot of their more relaxing, kind of slower tracks. I keep it for... Um, for like when I try to do certain video editing things, sometimes certain classical songs are kind of uh, kind of what you need for the background, I guess. So I don't know. That's kind of why I use that for. This is classified by Bond. These are four sexy chicks who uh, create kind of a quartet, but they kind of remix um, classical music uh, along with some like uh, kind of electronic sounds, um, a little bit of uh, like you know it's. It's really, really cool. It's like Lindsey Sterling, except uh, four, four bitches are all together doing it. It's really, really good. Really, really cool album. I, I love this record a lot. Really, really neat album. This is Studio Killer's debut album, uh, 2013 release, their first record. Um, I have really like the new singles that they've released so far with the Party Like It's Your Birthday and Dirty Car, those songs. So um, I'm kind of looking forward to... Um, seeing what these guys can do in the future, because I really thought their debut album was something special. Um, there's songs that I like more than others on this thing. I can't say it's perfect. Not as perfect as I thought it would be, but it's still a really, really good debut album, and I'm looking forward to the future for these guys. Another animated band. Uh, more than just gorillas, you know, so pretty cool. This is Lindsey Sterling's debut album. Big Lindsey Sterling fan. You guys know her. You guys love her. Um, she's so awesome. Just, uh, kind of mixing them that, uh, dubstep music along with her violin. Um, really, really good stuff. I like her a lot. This is her second album, Shattered, which is really, really good. She actually did a few songs with vocals on this record. Um, it's pretty, pretty good. Along with her Christmas album that I showed you guys in the last video. Um, that's kind of my collection of Lindsey Sterling. After this point, I started kind of getting a little tired of her, um, I hope she can kind of reinvent herself and do something a little bit more different. I'm not sure what else she could do different, but I still really enjoy Lindsey Sterling's music from time to time, for sure. This is the Hot Fuss by The Killers. Classic album of the 2000s, for sure. Um, Jenny was a friend of mine, Mr. Brightside. Um, some of the deep cuts are a little hit and miss for me on this. I can't say it's perfect, but still pretty great. This one right here is almost perfect for me. Day and Age, their third album by The Killers. Um, I love this thing. Uh, except for Good Night Travel Well, the closing song is a little bit boring to me. Um, a Dustland Fairy Tale 2, track number five, I don't find to be as great. But everything else on this album is just perfect. Really, really good album. I like it a lot. This is Asleep at the Will, tribute to the Bob Willis and the Texas Playboys. This is more of a Texas swing group. I showed you guys a vinyl of these guys. Really, really huge collection of their uh, of uh, <laughs> this tribute record by Asleep at the Will. Lots of really cool guest stars. Lots of really cool Texas swing. Really, really big sounding album, 1994. Really, really good record. Pretty great. This is Purity Ring, Shrines, um, kind of a cool, like, synth pop, dark pop kind of thing. Um, really creative group, really, really good songs on this thing. Um, along with their, their second album, Another Eternity, I also really like by Purity Ring. Um, this album got a little bit more accessible, a little bit more poppy, a little bit more bright pop, a little bit not so dark and creepy-ish, I guess. Just depends on what you like, you know. This is The Deer Hunter by Migrant, by The Deer Hunter. This is a pretty great record. It um, reminds me a lot of, uh, like, uh, some kind of, like, Christian music, kind of with the vocals, but um, it's not Christian at all, but just a really creative record. A lot of strings, a lot of piano, a lot of really, really nice, pretty lyrics. Um, pretty cool thing. I like it a lot. Oh, I got a few of these. This is Weird Eye Yankovic, Running With Scissors. The first CD that I ever owned myself. I got it for my birthday when I was very, very young. Probably 1999, the year this album came out. 
Running With Scissors is probably one of my favorite Weird Al Yankovic albums just because it is one of the first ones that I ever heard. And also the saga begins, um, the song where he he pretty much described the entirety of um, The Phantom Menace, Star Wars Episode One. Really, really cool to the parody of American Pie, of course. Lots of great songs on this thing, though. It's a, it's a classic in his discography, in my opinion. Also, I have a copy of Poodle Hat by Weird Al Yankovic. Um, this is a pretty great record, too, with eBay and Couch Potato and those Eminem parodies. And there's a lot of great songs on Poodle Hat. Really, really good. Going back to his older days with uh, Off the Deep End by Weird Al Yankovic. I've collected these CDs for so long. Had these in my collection for a while. And the newest one that I've actually cared about is Straight Out of Linwood. Minority Fun was also really, really good. His most recent album. Um, Alpocalypse was a bit of a disappointment, wasn't it? But Straight Out of Linwood was really good. The Green Day cover with a Canadian idiot is pretty good. White and Nerdy, which was a huge song. Um, lots of really good songs on this record. Pretty cool. Now we got the Good Charlotte Collection with Young and the Hopeless. This is also one of the first albums that I got outside of just listening to Word of Yankovic was Young and the Hopeless. This was kind of one of my accessible points to when I really got into music collecting um, when I was about in eighth grade or so. This was Sound of My Childhood right here. This and Linkin Park's Meteora. So Young and the Hopeless, this album means a whole lot to me for that reason. Uh, Good Morning Revival. Good Charlotte, really, really good album. like it a lot. This one's a classic, too, The Chronicles of Life and Death. This is the life version. Um, my brother actually has the death version, but uh, we both really enjoy some Good Charlotte. These are still really good albums. I mean, so much time has passed, and so much more music has came out since Good Charlotte's glory days, but um, they still got some good music, man, if you just go back and listen to them. Pretty much the only Owl City album that I really, really care about is Ocean Eyes. Everyone knows fucking Fireflies. Um, I'm sure people treat, Owl City fans treat Fireflies like I probably do, like Clint Eastwood or something. Like, you need to get more deeper into <laughs> Owl City than just the main single that everyone knows him for. But even though Fireflies is on this record, there's still so many great songs on this thing. Um... Just a, the whole thing is really, really good. I don't listen to it that much. My wife can't really stand this guy. She thinks he's really, really corny, which I can understand why she would say that. But um, he, he does make some sweet, relaxing music for sure. This is uh, Sufan Stevens with uh, Greetings from Michigan. Um, Sufan is uh, he's a good singer-songwriter kind of artist. Uh, really kind of down tune, kind of more sad kind of lyrics. Um, his original plan was to create an album for all 50 states. Um, Come, Feel, Come Make Some Illinois was the other one that he did in this series. He didn't get very far. I don't think he made too many albums in that series. I wish he had stuck with that plan because I would have loved to heard what he would have done with a North Carolina album, but this Greetings from Michigan has a bunch of great subject matter on it with, um, with the first record on the album talking about Flint, Michigan, especially with the, I don't know, you know the types of problems that those people are dealing with, but I would definitely recommend you listen to Greetings from Michigan. It's probably my favorite Sufan album to date. So, yeah. The Little Dragon Collection with a Ritual Union. Uh, thanks to Gorilla's Plastic Beach, I really got into Little Dragon hard. This album actually came out soon after Plastic Beach did, and uh, this was a great entry point for me. Um, some of my favorite Little Dragon songs are on this thing, for sure. The whole album's great. I'm making ice. Just ignore that sound. I've got some friends coming over. Well, some family, I should say. So I'm making some ice for drinks. Um, this is Season High by Little Dragon, their most recent album. Uh, thought this was really good, too, a lot. Uh, people kind of uh, discount this thing, especially Little Dragon fans. But I thought this was a pretty decent album the whole way through, honestly. So, whatever. Cage the Elephant, debut album. Uh, they make some fun-ass music, man. This Cage the Elephant album, especially their first one, you know, they just had a certain sound and they rolled with it, and I think it's, I think it's really, really good. Uh, probably their, their best album still to date is Melophobia by Cage the Elephant. 
Uh, love this whole thing. I saw them in concert with Beck um, in the summer of last year, and that was an amazing show. Cage the Elephant know how to put on a concert, man. It was awesome. They were better than Beck, um, in my opinion. Here's Social Cues, the newest uh, Cage the Elephant album. It goes back and forth between Melophobia and this one for me. I, I love Social Cues so much that it's just, it's hard for me to tell, honestly. Just Cage the Elephant are just a great band, man. They, they really, really are. Especially those three albums. Oh, Flyleaf. Ain't this, doesn't this just take you guys back to high school? Holy shit, 2007. Oh my god, I'm so sick. Remember that single? Ah, I thought these guys were so cool back then. I thought they were so great. I just love this album. There's some good songs on this thing, though. As I'm looking at the track listing, I'm remembering these songs. I haven't listened to this in years. Years. Pretty good, though. Oh, that's a classic. Lily Allen, It's Not Me, It's You. Um, one of my favorite pop albums of all time is, is this record right here. Um, Everyone's At It, The Fear, Not Fair, 22. Just the opening of this record so perfect. But yeah, Lily Allen, It's Not Me, It's You. Never got much more into her after this album, but um, definitely recommend you guys check that out. If you're looking for a pop album that's not your general like Taylor Swift singer-songwriter bullshit, this album has a little bit more creativity to it than that, which I like. So This is Kari Pamu Pamu, uh, Japanese artist. Um, she creates a lot of creative pop music. Uh, she got pretty big around the time this album came out in like 2013. Um, definitely check out some Kairi Pamu Pamu. Um, people always go about that uh, Kiro Kiro Benito with um, her album uh, Space and Time and uh, and Graduation. But this is another uh, another uh, Japanese pop artist that you guys should check out. Uh, Kari Kari Pamu. Check it out. It's a pretty good album the whole way through. This Switchfoot, The Beautiful Letdown. I, I've had this CD forever. I don't know where the, the actual case is, but this is about the only Switchfoot album that I give a fuck about. Um, it's got meant to live. This is your life. Uh, more than fine. This whole album is just amazing, really. Meant to live. That's such a classic song. But yeah, Switchfoot. Nothing got better for Switchfoot than this record, in my opinion. Is Broken Bell's first album. Never got much more into Broken Bell's. I did have a copy of their second album for a while, but Broken Bell's uh, lead singer of the Shins and Danger Mouse kind of did a little project together and this is the first record from that collaboration and it was really really good for its time the high road is a great song um yeah check out broken bells they're pretty cool especially the first one it's awesome this is pepe deluxe queen of the wave man it's really hard for me to describe this album but everybody should listen to this thing because it is so so cool such a creative record so much massive instrumentation there's a song in here that sounds like a straight up like pirate sailor sing along thing. Uh, Contain thyself. Go check out "Contain Thyself" by uh, Pepe Deluxe. Um, you you guys will fall in love if you like that song. Check out the rest of the album because it is it is incredible and not many people know about it. So highly recommended. <laughs> this is the Avalanches with "Since I Left You." Uh, I think everybody, I don't know if I talked about it a lot on my channel back then, but I was pretty hyped for the release of Wildflower from uh, 2016 because um, this is this record came out in 2001, and the Avalanches went almost 15 years before they put out their second album, which is crazy at the time. But since I left you, this is a modern sample-based album classic, kind of compared to like DJ Shadow's Introducing album and uh, Jay Dilla's Donuts record. Um, those are big, famous sample-based records, and this is a classic in that genre for sure. So Since I Left You by the Avalanches, check it out, especially the song Frontier Psychiatrist. That was the song that was the main single from this record. And this is Wildflower by the Avalanches, their comeback record. Um, I don't say, I can't say that I love every single song on this record, and it kind of ruins the experience when every single song on this album, just like Since I Left You, kind of connects together to form a cohesive whole. 
Um, you're not supposed to break apart any of the songs when you listen to their albums. Um, and some of them I just have to skip because I just think they're so terrible. But um, there's a lot of really, really cool sections of this album, though, that can be listened to a, in full and just be a really creative journey. Um, kind of a vintage sound going on in this record, so... I don't know. It's it's still special to me, despite some of the songs that I don't care for. But um, check out Wildflower. Just check out the Avalanche's full two album discography anyway. So here's the Muse collection with Black Holes and Revelations. This is the album that got me introduced to the band. And um, I'm in that weird minority where I find the newer Muse albums to be way better than the old ones. I do not understand everybody's infatuation with Origin of Symmetry. I had that album for a while, but there's some songs I would skip on that thing. I just didn't get it. I enjoyed the main singles, and I enjoy a lot of old Muse songs. I just can't say that I enjoy full old Muse albums. So, I don't know. This is, this, this is a classic, in my opinion, for sure. One of the pinnacles of their discography, Black Holes of Revelations. The Resistance, which is awesome in its own right. The Second Law, which I find to be severely overrated... People hate on this thing way more than it deserves, in my opinion. Drones is an album that um, I almost kind of agree with, that it is a bit kind of not that great, I guess. But it's still pretty good. I, I get what they were doing. They were trying to go back to just like, let's make a rock album again. But I just think some of it comes off a little cringy. I guess, I don't know. I don't listen to Drones a lot. It's not what I want to go to Muse for. And then Simulation, of course, which I also find very, very underrated by Muse fans. I think it's great. I love the concept. I love the sounds. The songs are great. I, I think it's an amazing album. This is Lone Galaxy Garden. Straight up tropical kind of spacey electronic album. Uh, I love the album cover too, but yeah, Lone Galaxy Garden. Anthony Fantano really pra praised this the year this album came out. Um, really, really good. Classic. Guerrero by Beck, probably my favorite Beck album, apart from uh, Colors. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not a huge Beck fan, but I really do enjoy this whole thing the whole way through. Scissor Sisters, Magic Hour. Man, this is a fun little album. Um, this album seems to be pretty popular within the gay community, which is kind of funny to me. I mean, I I mean, it's not funny at all. I'm just saying, I just really, really enjoy it. It's just funny how it kind of gets uh, pegged in there with that kind of, I, don't, I guess, subculture of people. But um, yeah, really, really good album, though. I think it's a lot of fun. Let's Have a Kiki. Go listen to Let's Have a Kiki. See what you think of that song by Scissor Sisters. This is Smoky Bandits, the album debut. Uh, full instrumental album, um, kind of jazzy, kind of reggae, um, kind of dubby. Just a big combination of music going on in this thing. It's um, really, really creative, really, really cool. I don't know many people who know about this, this group, but let, go listen to Smoky Bandits. Uh, Smoke in the Attic. Go check out the song Smoke in the Attic by Smoky Bandits. It will turn you into a fan. Then check out the whole thing because it's great. This is Subtract, Wonder Where We Land. I really, really enjoy this album by Subtract. It's uh, not regarded as one of the best. People normally prefer Subtract's first album. But um, I think this is pretty great, honestly. Death from Above, 1979, The Physical World. I didn't really get much more into these guys after this record. I didn't like their debut that much, but I really enjoyed this, so I got a copy of it. But uh, Physical World by Death from Above, 1979. It's really, really good. I'd recommend it. This is Radiohead's OK Computer. Classic album. Classic album. Not much needs to be said. Same for this one with Kid A. Classic album, classic album, not much needs to be said. Along with Moonshade Pool, which is another fucking amazing Radiohead album. Those are my, kind of my pinnacle three Radiohead records. Um, I do also enjoy parts of uh, Amnesiac and uh, and um, a little bit of, uh, of uh, In Rainbows, but I don't know. Here's Hot Chip In Our Heads. 
it's a pretty good electronic album. There's some songs I still skip on it, but uh, for its time, I really, really enjoyed this album for a while. This is the full Panic at the Disco collection, Fever You Can't Sweat Out, classic I still love, Panic at the Disco. I listen to them quite a lot. Pretty Odd, Vices and Virtues, <clears throat> Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die, Death of a Bachelor, and Pray for the Wicked. And if he comes out with anything else, I'm going to own that too. I love Panic at the Disco. This is Mogwai with Mr. Beast. Uh, Mogwai is kind of like a weird like post-rock instrumental group. Um, you either love them or you hate them when it comes to Mogwai, I find, with certain fans. Dire Straits, Money for Nothing. I don't really listen to this a lot. <laughs> the Books, The Way Out. This is a weird one. Anthony Fantano likes to praise this album a lot, for sure. Um, I think it's pretty good. I, I, it's very, very weird, very, very weird music, um, but, you know, it, it's, it's something different, it's something different, there's a lot of tracks on here that I really, really like, A Cold Freezing Night is definitely my favorite track from this album, for sure, check it out, here's another really, really weird one with Deerhoof, this is Breakup Song by Deerhoof, Definitely check this out if you want something noisy and weird and loud and annoying, but in but in the best way. In the best way. Check out Deer Hoof Breakup Song. That's the name of this record. Check it out. Pretty, pretty cool. This is the Black Keys Collection, Rubber Factory. Probably still their best album, I would say. Magic Potion, which is awesome. Brothers. Of course, El Camino. Of course, that's a that's a classic in my opinion. Turn Blue. Of course, still really good for its own thing, you know. And uh, Let's Rock, the newest one. Really, really cool. Let's get this crap out of the way here, so I can get to this stuff. This is Nightwish, Dark Passion Play, kind of a metal group. Uh, female lead singer, Nightwish, put on some really cool music there. Jeff Lynne's ELO, I've talked about this already, don't really care for this that much. Prefer all of the other older ELO albums. This is the Little Hurricane Collection. Home Wrecker, uh, Dirty Blues Band, it's kind of like uh, the Black Keys if they were kind of watered down. Female drummer, male lead singer. They're great. They're so great. So underrated. Little Hurricane. Check out all these albums. Little Hurricane, Home Record, and this is Gold Fever. I got it signed by the band. This is uh, out of order. Little Hurricanes. <laughs> same sun, same moon. Really, really good album. Also signed by the group. And a copy of Love Luck by Little Hurricane. Their newest stud. And if they come out with anything else, I'm going to own that too. Love Little Hurricane. They're so great. This is Django Django's self-titled album. Some people might have heard the song Waveforms on Grand Theft Auto V. But the whole song, the whole album I should say, is amazing. Really, really creative group. I wish that their follow-up albums were as good as this one. But they're just not. I just stick with the debut album, in my opinion. Billie Eilish, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? I'm such a normie. Uh... But I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. There's a great mix of like hipster bullshit in here with albums like this that are extremely popular. But that's how I roll, man. I don't see things as in mainstream or underground. I just see good music. And I don't really care where it comes from or what the, what the, I guess, the hot take is on it. So, uh, Three Chairs of Sweet Revenge. <clears throat> a classic classic of the 2000s along with the black parade of course and one of my favorite i love danger days i think danger days is a lot of fun so that's why my chemical romance skrillex scary monsters and nice sprites kind of hit you on that whole dubstep thing but i really really enjoyed this a lot pretty good ep rival sons pressure and time this was like the band that was like Greta Van Fleet before Greta Van Fleet was a thing. This is the band that everybody was like, they sound like Led Zeppelin. 
uh it's kind of funny how that goes but uh yeah rival sons that's a pretty good album pretty easy listen but it's a lot of fun this is rufus with atlas man this is a really cool band they um kind of create like this really uh it's electronic music but it's like really soothing really really cool really downbeat and really really awesome love it and this is rufus follow-up album bloom did not care that much for their newest one but i really like these two records from rufus um, definitely check them out they're really really good going down here to the damon albarn collection uh, that was in my assumptions video as well somebody's like oh you have a shrine of everything damon albarn i wouldn't say i have a shrine but i do have a certain section on my shelf that is just dedicated to his work this is kind of like my collection shelf down here you'll see as we go through it space monkeys cd copy of course this is put that back on there singles collection cd dvd combo um don't listen to this a whole lot you know me i prefer full gorillas albums apart from just listening to the singles all the time uh this is one of the releases that actually had don comatic on a cd though so that's a good reason to own this got a phone call there sorry about that but uh yeah the singles collection by gorillas and then this is my collection of uh, damon albarn and the heavy seas um i have both nights this is from november 15th 2014 and this is november 16th this was soon after um <clears throat> he released everyday robots and they did a live show at the uh royal albert hall in london and these were recorded especially from by abbey road studios and uh they put out these out on cd for pre-order that year and uh, i don't think you can get them in like a normal fashion but this is a great show because it's a it's a combination of the songs that he had on everyday robots along with blur and gorilla songs and he played some pretty deep cut gorilla songs he played spitting out the demons during these shows and uh along with um along with uh all your life by blur that um that b-side which is really really cool to hear in a live setting because you normally don't get that so um uh, definitely check these out if you can i don't even I don't even know. I, I feel lucky to actually have these, honestly, so kind of keep them around. But the only disappointing thing is that both sets are the um, the same set list. So it's not like there's any difference between the two nights. I personally think the first night is the best performed one. So this is the one that I listen to all the time. But I have both of them for some reason. So this is the soundtrack to monkey journey to the west the opera that damon and jamie did together um the new album from the creators of gorillas it says in the corner um there's not many songs that i say that i return to on this thing typically it's mostly just because i'm a gorillas fan that i own this thing but heavenly peach banquet on the soundtrack to this is a really really great song in my opinion so check that out this is everyday robots cd dvd combo pack um pretty cool i really enjoy the um everyday robots track by track video with damon that's on the dvd of this thing of him explaining some of the meanings of most of these songs uh really really good really great album i mean really really great uh really has a unique style to it amongst everything that damon does which is something that i think is really really cool about it is because it doesn't sound like blur or gorillas or the good the bad and the queen it sounds purely just like a whole new thing for a solo artist and uh i don't know i hope damon does something else by himself sometime because this was something special in my opinion really really great this is a copy of the good the bad and the queen's first album cd dvd combo classic album absolutely classic um 2007 man isn't that crazy uh the bonus dvd is pretty cool got some live footage on it of a few songs some rehearsal footage interview with the band just a classic album just uh, so good one of my favorite projects from damon this whole thing this is my cd copy of maryland the good the bad and the queen's second album it came in my maryland box set along with my green vinyl that i have showed off to you guys so uh, i keep it on my shelf for easy access for when i want to listen to the new the good the bad and the queen album and uh 
so good. I think I like it more than the first album now, which is so funny because I was so critical about this album when it was first revealed. But uh, yeah, just uh, every once in a while, man, you just got to throw in Maryland because it is great for like nighttime driving. I just love it for that. So here is a copy of, whoops, The Magic Whip by Blur, my CD copy. Um, I keep the rest of my CD copies are <coughs> in my Blur 21 box set on the mantle. So I just keep the newest Blur album over here. Um, pretty great. Pretty awesome return for Blur. Um, I don't know. I just, I think it's an amazing album. I think it's a great fit in their discography as a whole. It's just so cool to hear them Grand Cox and guitars again, especially after Think Tank was kind of missing them. So um, really, really good. Speaking of which, here is Think Tank, the special edition. Um, it's got this, like, this cloth feel to it. And all of the, and all of the lyrics to all of the tracks on Think Tank, along with some Damon scribbles in there, it looks like, from when they were writing the songs. With the, uh, the CD in the back. And, uh, if you put the CD into a computer, it will play a few live versions of some tracks on the album. Um, which is great. I mean, uh, I, since it's a special edition, I, I haven't sold it. I just keep it because I feel like it might be kind of hard to find nowadays. So special edition of Think Tank, which was the newest Blur album for years until the, uh, the Magic Whip came out. So pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Here is my CD Gorillas collection with the first album. I'm not going to go into detail about these because I've talked to you guys about them enough, but, uh, Demon Days, though I will say that my copy of Demon Days is the Japanese edition because I really like the, having the track 68 State, uh, that B-side ending out the album apart from just Demon Days. Even though Demon Days is a perfect album closer, I do like having 68 State on my copy of uh, the official album. This is the version, this is the album that I listen to the most, the version of the album. I like my CD copy because there's no transitions on the vinyl, which I've explained numerous times, but yeah. Classic album, of course. These are actually out of order, which is kind of annoying to me that I've said it now, but this is G-Sides, the, uh, the B-Sides album for the first record. Some good remixes on this thing, too. Uh, Noodle's holding Bonesy on my version, but I know there's a version where you can get of her holding uh, Godzilla, and I think there's a few extra tracks on that version as well. It might be the Brazilian copy or something like that. I can't remember, but the set, the track listing is longer, too on that copy than just the standard nine track album that I have. But um, I would like to collect that other version of G-Sides too, just so I could have more tracks because I think that would make G-Sides a better album if it was more track heavy. But I'm um, gonna put that in the right order now, right after the first album, because that's really annoying. My special edition of D-Sides, I showed this off in a video recently. It's got the patches and the book in it and all that cool stuff. D-Sides is great. Here is my Japanese version of D-Sides, which has uh, film trailer music on it, which was the bonus track for um, the Japanese ver version. It's not on the standard U.S. version. So film trailer music is pretty cool, even though it's kind of a big nothing song. It also has the music video for Rocket, if you stick the CD into a computer. And um, the rest of it's pretty much the same, but I like having a jewel case copy of uh, D-Sides, apart from just that kind of, like, uh, gatefold booklet that they give you in the special edition so this is my japanese daytime cover of plastic beach um once again i have it so that i can have the bonus track pirates progress ending out the album apart from just pirate jet um i would i would the itunes version for that three suns two stars six moons whatever the hell the name of that track is um I have it digitally, but of course they didn't release that as a physical album. If they did, I would rebuy this album again just so I could have both of those bonus tracks ending out Plastic Beach. But that's why I have the daytime cover, because I wanted that. Um, amazing album, of course. My daytime copy. This is the one I listen to the most. Here's The Fall. Nothing special about it, but it's the fall. Pretty great, and it's on right, of course. Keep getting phone calls, man. It's hard to do this, but yeah. A special edition of Humans with the bonus 
album tracks i love that back cover with the neon and the realistic body or whatever uh, i think it's really cool but yeah it's gatefold and everything too you know cds on each side really really cool i wish they released a dvd along with it or something but whatever this is the now now of course and i have the now now my special edition demon days with the fold out covers of all four members y'all remember when this thing came out i'm sure I put my other copy of Demon Days in there, but yeah, it's really, really cool. Just kept it for the for the unique way of opening that thing. This is Midlife, the Beginner's Guide to Blur, kind of an off-the-wall blur compila compilation, but I do find it a little bit more entertaining than the Best of Blur album because uh, there's some actual deep cuts on this thing. I mean, check out this set list, man. And, you know, you have to track Bugman on there and Trim Trab, which is awesome. Um, really, really cool. I, I love the I love this thing. It's so much better than the uh, Best of Blur album. So if you're looking to get someone into Blur, uh, Beginner's Guide to Blur, that's the name of this thing. So check this out because it just delves so much more into the weird stuff. And it's just so much better. Great compilation. Great album. Here's the best of Blur, what I just got done talking about. This is a, the more normy track list of Blur songs, but uh, it's got to be in my collection, of course. I would definitely recommend if you're looking to get into the heart of things, I guess this would be better. But I also enjoy the 13 era of Blur, which is where they did all the really weird stuff. So midlife is better for that. So I do have a few of the singles from the UK. Um, 19 through 2000. I don't own a ton of these. Um, they're just not as easy to find here, and I just don't care to really own them. I would rather listen to full albums, but just for my personal collection, most of them, the ones that I have are, um, I don't know, from the older album, from the debut record. Let's rock the house single. The Clint Eastwood single. The best one to get, in my opinion, would definitely be the Space Monkeys vs. Gorillas EP because it does have the bonus track Space Monkeys theme. I don't know if I should call that track an official Gorillas track. Y'all can tell me your opinions on that. But I really, really enjoy that song. If it's a Gorilla song or not a Gorilla song, Space Monkeys theme is a really, really good track on this thing. A really, really unique, really, really cool. But uh, this is the uh, M1A1 um, redone version that's on the single. So, really, really cool. And this is the double A-sided single for Kids With Guns and El Manana with uh, Stop the Dams. It's track number three, which is really, really cool. Uh, Stop the Dams is one of my favorite, another one of my favorite D-side cuts. So, this is the Beatles section with uh, Anthology 1. This is like the oldest anthology collection. This is The Beatles, live in Hamburg, 1962. I don't really see this a whole lot. Um, good combination of songs from um, Please Please Me and With The Beatles, along with a few tracks that didn't even show up as recorded versions, which is really, really cool. So, um, or studio versions, I should say. So, a uh, really unique CD. I don't really see this a whole lot, so I'm glad to, glad to own that. This is the Capitol Beatles collection. Meet the Beatles. This is just uh, all of their Capitol albums on CD. I wish I had more of these Capitol albums on vinyl, especially the Capitol albums that I actually love from the Beatles. I would like to have those on vinyl. I wouldn't need all of these on vinyl, I don't think. Second album, pretty great. Um, pretty great track listing. It would definitely be, I'll say the ones that I are my favorite as I go through. That's what I'll do. I want to have Meet the Beatles on vinyl for sure. It's probably my favorite. Beatles 65... Uh, Beatles 4. It's not bad. I would really like to have this one because I go back and forth on this a whole lot with uh, Rubber Soul, the Capital Edition. Because the Capital version of Rubber Soul starts on the song I've Just Seen a Face and also includes the song um, It's Only Love, which is on Help. Um, but I, the Rubber Soul was inspired from Bob Dylan listening, uh, 
John Lennon and listening to a lot of Bob Dylan, I should say. So I feel like that the folky kind of more folk rock influences that they were going for works better when you have a song like I've Just Seen a Face opening up the album with the acoustic guitar. And um, I think I feel like Drive My Car doesn't really give off the same feeling as I've Just Seen a Face starting off this record. So I almost like the Capital Rubber Soul album more than I like the UK version Rubber Soul, which is so weird because every other album, I pretty much prefer the UK version over the Capitol collection, but Rubber Soul is a special one, in my opinion, when it comes to the Capitol version. I think it really just gives off the feeling that the album is trying to portray a little bit better than the UK version. Definitely would like to own that on vinyl. Same thing with this one. I just love the track listing on Yesterday and Today. I do have a butcher cover. I wish it was real. But uh, this one starts with Drive My Car. So, yeah. Meet the Beatles, uh, Capital Rubber Soul, and Yesterday and Today. I'd love to have these albums on vinyl. This is one of my absolute favorites. Just look at that track listing. I just love that track listing. This is a good combination of songs to have all together, in my opinion. Really, really cool. This is Hey Jude. I find this one to be really weird having a song having songs like Revolution on the same album as songs like Can't Buy Me Love and I Should Have Known Better. It's just like really, really bouncing back and forth. Old Brown Shoe is on this album though, which is really cool to have that kind of more past mastery sounding track on an actual album. I really like that. Don't listen to these a lot, Hard Day's Night soundtrack. Um, with instrumental cuts from the movie. I just prefer the UK. Just Let's just listen to Beatles songs, you know? Let's just listen to Beatles songs. Let's not listen to, like, orchestral things. Same thing with the Help soundtrack for Capital. I don't know. I own them for purposes, you know, just to have them on the shelf. Something new. And... I really Beatles. Just listen to, um... Just listen to Please Please Me. It's better. Um, it's pretty much Please Please Me. It really is. The, the, this album is just Please Please Me. All right. This is the, the Beatles' Yellow Submarine songbook. I would much prefer this over the UK Yellow Submarine album. Um, really great mix of tracks on this thing. I really like the Yellow Submarine song track. Um, this is a good album. This is a good album. It's a good album. Good collection. This is the Love soundtrack for the show in Las Vegas, a mashup of a bunch of Beatles songs all together. It's a really, really creative project. Um, I do like to listen to this from time to time because it's kind of cool hearing the different mashups. I think they did that really smartly, and I don't find it blasphemous to be mixing songs together to make other songs. I just think it's really, I think it sounds cool. It sounds cool. Copy of the blue album. I used to have the red album, but I gave it away as a present. Um, just a best of collection from 67 to uh, 70. You know what the red and blue albums are. I don't need to explain that. Beatles Live at the Hollywood Bowl. This was pretty popular when uh, when uh, Ron Howard put out his documentary on Hulu. Um, that was a great documentary, but uh, just a live Beatles album uh, with actual good quality. So if you want to hear the Beatles live, I definitely recommend checking this out. This is the version with the bonus tracks as well, of course, because that's how I roll. This is the Beatles Live at the BBC collection, volumes one and two. It's both CDs in there of the Beatles Live at the BBC. Um, really, really cool collection. I mean, like, if you want to hear more Beatles live on the radio kind of things without all the screaming girls and stuff like that, I could recommend this collection because it's it's both CDs in one package. It's uh, really, really cool. I like having that. Then here are the UK albums. Do I have to explain? I'm just going to do it. This is Please Please Me. These are all the UK albums from the 2009 remasters. These were all collected separately. I did not buy the box set. I got all of these albums separately as time went on. They're really tattered. They're a little bit rotten just from me playing them so damn much in my car that actually used to have a CD player in it. <sighs> I miss that car. But, uh, yeah, these are, these are all the UK Beatles albums from the 2009 remasters, stereo remasters on CD. I keep them all in chronological order of release because I am a crazy person. Help. 
UK rubber sole. Revolver. Funny thing about the Capital Revolver is it's the same revolver, except it doesn't have two awesome songs on it. They got thrown on to yesterday and today, so the Capital Revolver is absolutely useless. Do not own that thing. There's no reason to listen to the Capital Revolver. It just takes away two awesome songs, which is a shame. Let's make Beatles albums longer. Don't make them shorter. Revolver. Classic. Sergeant Pepper, of course. None of these are the new versions of like of Sergeant Pepper and Abbey Road, the 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 new ones. I do not have those on CD. I just have the uh, well, I do have them on CD. They're in my box set. But Magical Mystery Tour, White Album. These are all strictly 2009 remasters. Yellow Submarine. Happy Road, Let It Be, and Past Masters. So, yep, that is my Beatles collection. All right, here we go with the Pink Floyd on CD. I got a few more of these on vinyl than I do on CD, but here's my jewel case of Dark Side of the Moon, The Wall, Wish You Were Here, metal and Adam Hart mother they are not in order as you can tell but here go with the Lincoln Park with hybrid theory classic album Meteora even more classic album in my opinion minutes to midnight not as good A thousand suns way way over, uh, underrated way under People need to give this album more of a fair shake, in my opinion. Jesus, great album. And Living Things, which was amazing as well. Used to have a copy of The Hunting Party. Gave that away as a present. I need to rebuy that, because that was actually a really good record. This is Green Day, the studio albums, 1990 to 2009. Pretty much has every album inside of it, all the way up to... Uh, 21st Century Breakdown. So, get the full Green Day discography up to that point in this box, which is really, really cool. Would recommend if you want to quickly collect all that. I like having it like that. Green Day Side Project Foxborough Hot Tubs. <laughs> really, really awesome side project from Green Day. Love it. This is Uno Dos and Trey. On a box collection. Really, really like Uno Dos Trey. I do not care what people say. I can throw on every single track in this collection on a playlist and listen to the whole thing and have a ton of fun with it. Don't give a fuck. And if people don't like it, they can just listen to Demolicious. This is just dookie sounding versions of trilogy tracks and it's really, really good. I think it's great. One of my favorite record store releases is this Demolicious. It's really, really good. I like it a lot. The Green Day Live album, awesome as fuck. Pretty good. Released soon after the uh, 21st Century Breakdown on that tour. And this is, of course, from the American Idiot Tour with uh, Bullet and a Bible. Their live DVD, CD combo. Same as awesome as fuck. And then those are just burned CDs over in that corner. Would really like to make a special shout out for this uh, Pogo. Um, Pogo is a, um, he's an artist on YouTube who remixes, like, movies and, um, creates songs out of soundtracks from movies and, like, certain phrases from movies. Definitely check out Pogo on YouTube. He makes some amazing music. And, um, besides my box sets, that's pretty much it. My box sets pretty much contain... The uh, Sgt. Pepper's, the White Album, the Abbey Road, I have the special editions of all of those, along with the uh, Maryland box set. Um, I have actually showed off everything in, in a video, so I don't really think I need to show those off. And, um, oh yeah, Anthony reviewed this pretty positively, so I'll show this off, because this is kind of cool. Um... Kano Angioka, can't say it, but um, 
This is Japanese ambient music, environmental and new age music, 1980 to 1990. This is a collection of Japanese ambient songs. So there's a lot of really slow and really kind of like out there things on here. And this is like a description of the artists that you hear on the compilation. And um, go check out Anthony Fantano's review of this and um, go tell me what you think. Because... Uh, Really, really great collection, so I had to buy it. And um, it's just something I can say, you know, just kind of expands your musical mind a little bit, kind of like uh, opens your mind to different sounds, and um, just something I would really recommend if you want to try to expand your mind and kind of be more open-minded about what music can be, I suppose. So check this out, too. All right, you guys, I know this was a long one, but um finally done here. I hope you guys enjoyed this, so... Uh, have fun. Check out my recommendations. Mr. Money1235, I will see you guys soon.